Today we're going to be looking at the lead guitar style of Neil Young and those of you who have been following my lessons won't be surprised to learn that Neil's style incorporates that same mixture of pentatonic scale riffs and riffs formed out of those movable first position chords those chord shapes that we've been talking about, the three main ones formed out of what you would call the F shape or the E shape the A shape and the D shape moved up the neck used with hammer-ons and particularly in the style of Neil today we're going to be looking closely at arpeggios. For those of you who are relatively new to terminology, an arpeggio is simply playing a chord one note at a time. That would be a C major arpeggio and you might think, geez, that's really simple. And that's precisely the point. Um, you can create some really neat lead guitar lines very easily by incorporating these arpeggios. So that's what we're going to be looking at with Neil today. I'm going to be using the song Country Home. Not one of the more well-known Neil songs, but if you have the album Ragged Glory, you know it well. Uh, Ragged Glory is most likely Neil's greatest guitar album and one of the greatest guitar albums ever. It's uh, a tour de force from beginning to end of lead guitar work. Country Home has at least three solos on it. I'm going to be showing you about a half dozen licks from the song. I'm going to play the lick first from the original, show you how to play it, and show you why it's important, why it's a good thing to learn, because even if you're not into Neil or copying into copying these licks, you're going to learn something about how to incorporate arpeggios and movable chord shapes into your lead guitar playing. Okay, so without further ado, let's look at the introduction of Country Home. <laughs> Okay, that's the beginning motif and it is repeated at the start of each of the solos in the song. So it's really the signature lick from this, from this song. Um, you're going to be coming, the song is in the key of G major or E minor as uh, a lot of the songs on that album are. Uh, and the chords are really simple. They are just simply G, C, and D. To George Harrison, Pete Townsend, Keith Richards, John Fogarty, and now Neil Young. And so it should be starting to sink in that since all of these guys use these movable chord shapes in their lead playing, that it's pretty darn important. Okay? Um, we're going to start off Country Home with a G major arpeggio, since that's the first chord in the song, is a G major. We're going to take our D shape. Okay, from the first position, we're going to move it up until it's a G major. That'll be at the seventh fret. When I come up here, I like to bar it. We're not going to really use this fourth string right now, but you should get used to that shape. If you watch the Keith Richards uh, videos, uh, my lessons of Keith Richards tunes, you'll know that Keith lives right there with that shape. Um, we're going to start Country Home with a downward arpeggio of that G chord. And it just rings like a bell. I'm just adding notes on the 10th fret with my pinky on the 2nd and 1st string. So... And the second time, instead of letting it ring like a bell, he frets each, or he picks each note. And I think that's kind of why I like to play that full shape, because the next uh, lick there, when he goes to the C chord, he does play the fourth string. But the beginning with the G chord is just the top three strings, so again... So you see there he moves to a C chord of the F shape, the 8th fret, just hitting the 4th, 3rd, and 
second strings, and then he goes, brings that first string C into it. From the C chord to the D chord, which is the third chord in the progression, he just walks down this little lick. So again, just sliding from a C chord to a D chord, the same shape, that F shape. on that, that D chord shape. So that's the intro. You've got an arpeggio over a G chord, sliding into a C, moving up to a D, and then back to the G. Open, obviously, position G. All right, that's the intro. Pretty sweet. And it's repeated at the beginning of each solo. He plays it a little differently each time. Okay, the next lick I'm going to show you is in the first solo. He starts again with the signature motif, and then it goes like this. Okay, so you noticed after he played the D lick, he resolved to the open position. And that's to set himself up for these open position pentatonic licks. Remember from earlier lessons, we talked about the relative minor. You should remember that G major's relative minor is... E minor. So we're going to be playing that standard first position. G major slash E minor pentatonic scale. So when he resolves down there at the end of that motif, it, he's set up to do this little lick. So that's just very standard, you know, E minor pentatonic wanking. Um, we're playing in the second fret, the fourth and third strings, launch it with the E. And then the classic rock band. And then he just really twists it. So the important thing here, other than just that it's fun to play that with some pretty heavy overdrive, is that you notice that there was one note that is not in your G major slash E minor uh, a pentatonic scale, and that was the F sharp there that Neil hits that savage pinch harmonic with. Fourth fret, uh, fourth string. Why 
does that work? Why is that such a perfect note at that point and he, and he punctuates it so nicely with that harmonic? Well, I talked about this in the um, knocking on heaven's door lesson. When you've got a progression like this with a simple three chord rock and roll progression, you look at each chord, or any progression of course, but it's easier when it's a simple three chord song. You look at each chord and you see what notes are in those chords. These are all major triads, right? So we have a total possible of nine notes, and you'll see that some of them are repeated, so there's actually only seven notes. Okay, we have a G, which is G, B, D. We have a C, which is C, E, G. So already the G's been repeated. And then we have a D, which is D, F sharp, and A. So we see that the D is repeated. So there's only a, a total of seven notes here, and we have five notes in a pentatonic scale, right? That's what penta means. So what are the two notes that are represented in these three chords, in these three major triads, that are not in the pentatonic scale? Well, the C from the C chord is not in this pentatonic scale, and that F sharp from the D chord is not in this pentatonic scale. So you want to mix those two in. When do you want to mix them in? Obviously you want to mix in the C note over the C chord in the progression. You want to mix in the D sharp note, excuse me, the F sharp note over the D chord in the progression. So when Neil lands on that, that F sharp, he's doing it over the D chord in the progression and that's why it sounds so nice. So, those of you who are, you know, just getting into soloing and you're learning your pentatonic scales, but you're maybe getting a little bored with it and it sounds a little repetitive, look at the other chords in your progression, look at the notes in those chords, and mix in those notes over those chords in the progression, especially if they're chords that aren't in the scale, they aren't scale tones. You'll notice Neil does this like crazy throughout this song, He's hitting that F sharp over the D. He's hitting that C note over the C chord. Again, this point in the solo, you can hear it gets a really deep, woolly, thunder of the gods kind of tone uh, for this next lick. doing there uh, another arpeggio okay coming up to your uh, 12th position which would be a first position uh, E minor pentatonic scale it's going to play a G major arpeggio over the one Like your G chord down here, he does add one note into the arpeggio. He adds the E note, but otherwise it's just a straight arpeggio. Bring it up an octave. kind of noodles around that's what I was talking about uh, a second ago going from the G there at the 12th fret down to the F sharp uh, at the 11th fret playing off that one non scale tone that is however in the chord of the D major chord so Again, all the notes out of that G major pentatonic other than the 
F sharp at the 11th fret. Okay? Pretty cool arpeggio leg. Next we're going to be going to about 519, also in that third solo. That one still sounds really wooly to me. I think he's staying there on the uh, on the neck pickup. I'm going to switch it over. However, I give you a little bit more clarity to hear uh, what I'm playing. All he's doing is sliding around with those three major chords: G, C, and D. We're going to start with that little bar shape that I was talking about earlier there at the seventh fret. This is a G chord. He slides into it kind of like. So what we've got there is a G, passing chorded D, that's our A shape D there, 5th fret, or excuse me, 7th fret, so and then we're playing our another G chord there at the 3rd fret, I'm just playing the 4th and 3rd strings of the F shape. G chord. So we're really just going G, D, G, two different forms of the G chord. And then the next chord in the progression, of course, is going to be a C. So to get from the C, from the G to the C, he goes. shape C chord that we've been playing at the 8th fret and then he just kind of slides back and forth down a half step just playing the 4th and 3rd strings on his way to hitting that D chord our 10th fret D chord around it to get back to the G. So it's such a simple little thing, but when he's playing it with a lot of overdrive, really pretty cool. All right, so the perfect uh, example there of those movable chord shapes. This next lick uh, comes right after that in the progression. We're going to go to about 550. over the one as well and all he's doing is yet another G major arpeggio. He's taking that A major first position shape, sliding it up to the 12th fret, barring that. You can play it with three fingers or you can try to do a little half bar. hated this because it's a little awkward, but... So as you see, it resolves to the C chord. So we're going simply from a G to a C. And he does this little descending... Landing on that F sharp.
over the D on the F sharp and then landing on a D note when he resolves to the G to the 1. Alright, so another arpeggio lick for you there. Something that's so simple yet you fit it in. Play it with a little flare, play it with a little overdrive. Sounds really cool. Alright, the last lick is at about 6.07 and it's literally right after what we just heard. Okay, he's staying up there with that little arpeggio, and he's just playing it as a kind of a, a rake. That's the first part of it. So again, we're raking the 4-3-2 strings, the G chord at the 12th fret. Just playing D and E on the 2nd and 1st strings. Second time, A, B, D. Sec third time repeats like the 1st. That's all over the G. We're playing a G and then it goes next to the C. It's hard to tell, of course, but I believe that's one of the few, if only, times that Neil plays the C chord there with our D shape, as opposed to at the 8th fret with the F shape. But he's there, right? So why not resolve right there to your C shape? This is another important lesson of this lesson, is if you know all these different shapes and can play them all over the fretboard, you're going to find every chord within a fret or two of where you are at that time. So if you're up here at the 12th fret playing something over a G, well there's your G. And then you've got to land on a C. Oh yeah, that's right, there's the D shape C chord right there. So that's where he lands. And then he plays this really neat lick out of that. He's playing only the third and first string and he goes... Okay, we've seen those kinds of licks before. So easy yet so cool. So he's playing just the third and first strings of a C chord at the 12th fret resolving to a D chord at the 10th fret. Back to our G. And then he sat right there to do the signature motif. that signature motif differently every time. That's just an example. So many things to learn from today's lesson, but the main things I hope you'll get are playing those arpeggios, playing them with different shapes all over the neck, and then the other thing about adding those chord tones that might not be in the scale of the key of the song adding those in over those chords as they come in the progression. Check out uh, all of Ragged Glory. You'll find some just uh, overwhelming lead guitar work there to jam along to. And I think you'll find it a rich and rewarding experience. Thank you for joining me today, and I will see you next time.